Hey, Nonprofit Chairs, and welcome back to another episode of Nonprofit Biz Talk with me, your host, Tracy V. Allen, a nonprofit strategist. So today we're going to be talking, are you prepared for 2019? Because it's right around the corner. We're literally, what, three weeks away from 2019. So are you prepared for 2019? Have you started the process of preparation for excellence in 2019? And so what are some of the things that you can do to make sure that 2019 is not a repeat of 2018? Well, one of the first things that you need to look at is your revenue. How much revenue did you bring into the organization? Where did that revenue come from? And where did it not come from? Okay, so as much as you need to know where it came from, you also need to know where it didn't come from. So... For instance, if you have a nonprofit organization and most of your revenue came from grants and you didn't have any revenue coming in from new donors or earned income from the organization, that is something that you need to work on in 2019 because you need to have a diverse income stream coming into your nonprofit organization to be sustainable. So you can't just have monies coming in from grants and you don't have any money coming in from earned income. When I say earned income, I am talking about the monies that you collect for services rendered. So yes, in case you didn't know, you should be collecting money for services rendered. Being a nonprofit organization does not mean that you have to give everything that your nonprofit offers to the community free of charge. You can charge for the services rendered for programs and services on a sliding scale. So create a sliding scale and based on the um, income of the, the family and the family size, that will determine how much that family can afford to pay. So do you have monies coming in from earned income? Do you have monies coming in from grants? Do you have money coming in from donors? And did you have any successful fundraisers? Because you can have fundraisers, but they don't mean that they're successful. And when I say successful, successful is not breaking even. Because people don't have fundraisers to break even. They have fundraisers because they want to make money. So were you able to make at least three times what you spent on the fundraising effort? So if the fundraiser cost you $300 to set up, then were you able to make at least $900? So then you had a, a, um, a profit of $600. That is a fundraiser. I mean, you're not looking to have a fundraiser for $900, but I'm saying that would be something that you would consider a successful fundraiser because you were able to make a profit. If you're fundraiser cost you $300 to put on and you only made $300 or you made $350, I don't consider that a, a successful fundraiser. I consider that breaking even and breaking even is a waste of time, money, and resources. So did you have successful fundraisers? If you didn't have successful fundraisers, then you need to figure out why the fundraising efforts were not successful. Was it lack of knowledge? Was it not enough lead time in your marketing to get people in to um, donating or coming to your event? You know, uh, was it not um, set up correctly? Did you not have the right people in place? Did everything fall apart? Did the pieces that were supposed to be there, weren't they there? Did people not show up? What caused your fundraising efforts to be a bust. You need to figure that out. Why isn't your fundraisers successful? Assess that. Take a really deep, honest look at it. You know, you don't need to put your ego on when you're looking at assessing 2018 so you can make improvements in 2019. You have to take the ego away and give a serious look at what prevented you from reaching your goals in 2018. If you reached your goals, great. If you didn't, this is for you, okay? And so what made it, what made your fundraising efforts 
not successful in 2018. You need to look at that. Maybe you need to revamp your committees. Maybe you need to just scrap that fundraiser altogether, okay? But like I've stated before, you should not be having a bunch of micro fundraisers throughout the year because that could be one of the things. How many fundraisers did you have? If you were having a fundraiser every week or once a month or twice a month, you're fatiguing your audience. You're fatiguing the potential donors because then they just see you as a money grab because every time they look around you are having a fundraiser you need money you need money so one of the things that they start thinking is that oh well maybe this organization is not good with money and that's why they're constantly having to raise money so it's not a good look so if that's one of the things that you need to look at how many fundraisers did you have could you have had too many fundraisers or maybe you didn't have enough but take an honest look at your fundraising scheme. Like I said, make sure that you also are applying earned income, like you're charging for your programs and services. A nonprofit organization does not have to give everything free of charge. That's not what nonprofit means. It just means that you're giving comparable services that a for-profit agency would normally give at a more um, affordable price. That is what it means. And then you need to look at your grant sources. Are you making sure that you are managing the grant funds correctly and that you're keeping accurate records of how you're spending the, that money? Because if you go back and then you apply for that grant another year, when that grant is up, if you go and you reapply and the grantor is asking you for this information and you don't have accurate records, guess what? No matter how successful the program was and they, you cannot tell them how you spent the money, you're not going to get the grant again. So make sure you're managing the grants correctly and you're spending the monies appropriately. If you haven't been doing that, this is a good time to catch up and make sure that that is in place before you get into 2019. Because really and truly, you should be going into 2019 with a surplus of funds. If you're not going into the new year with a surplus of funds, and when I say a surplus of funds, I'm talking about enough money to run your organization for the first three to six months. If you don't have that money in your bank account currently, you're going into 2019 in a deficit. And a deficit is where you don't want to be because most nonprofit organizations, when they're operating in a deficit, they tend to operate from a place of desperation and they make a lot of errors and desperation shows when you are desperate for money it shows in your acts. It shows in your interaction with potential donors, with current donors. It just shows. So you never want to have to be in a place where you are struggling for money and trying to figure out exactly how you're going to get it. You always want to be ahead of the curve. So that is something that you want to make sure that you're putting a solid development and fundraising plan together for 2019. If you don't know how to do it yourself, then you need to hire someone. But one of the things I always tell nonprofit leaders is one of the first people that you need to hire um, when you start a nonprofit is a developmental person, someone who knows how to de do a development plan and develop the organization and do fundraising. You also need a program director, so you need a development director, a program director, and an administrative assistant. Those are, and yourself, which is the ED slash um, founder, if you're the ED founder. But those are the four main people that you need to have in your organization when you start because the development planning um, is pivotal and the programs and the development go together because the programs are where the money is. It's where you're gonna get your funding from. So that brings us to programs. <coughs> so that brings us to programs. Do you need to sit down and assess your programs. You should be doing this on a regular basis. It shouldn't just be done at the end of the year. It should be done regularly. So what you want to do is sit down and figure out what is working in your programs and what's not working in your programs. 
because you ran a program all year doesn't mean that the programs are successful because people are going through the programs doesn't mean that the program is successful either the results from that program is where your success lies because that's where the money is okay because when you go to um, apply for grants or you, a major funder um, funder comes your way they want to see the results from the program so did the participant go through the program and get the re desired results because when you write a program you write the program with results that you expect the participants to achieve at the very end of the program did the participants achieve that result and did that result hold over a period of time so if you were having a if your program was geared towards um, let's say getting people employed <laughs> um, let's say your, your programs were geared towards getting people employed so you went through the employment training program where you taught them how to answer questions in an interview how to um, dress for an interview how to do a resume and a cover letter and you probably gave them some basic let's say office skills uh, so that they can get a secretary's job or receptionist job or whatever it is. They went through the program. Did the participants get a job? That's the first thing. Did they get a job? If they got the job, did they keep the job? So did they go on the job and two weeks later, bam, they lost the job because either they were coming late maybe they didn't have the right etiquette or um, maybe they constantly had problems with child care you need to know what happened after they left your program because that determines whether or not your program was successful the program success is not just about them going through the program and leaving it's about the continued success of that participant so if you have a client who went through your program and after two weeks they were fired which you should have been following up to know that and after two weeks they were fired you need to figure out why they were terminated from their job and can you help them get another job or do they need to come back in for some more training in the area that caused them to lose their job if it was something like child care does your organization offer child care that can help this person out for a period of time do you have partnerships with other organizations that offer child care or offer subsidies for child care for so that you can help your participants succeed and that is the true measure of a good program or service did the results take did it stay for an extended period of time or was it just a one and done so they came through your program and then you forgot all about them they forgot all about what they learned and then it's on to the next remember the money is in the programs if your programs are not successful you're not going to get the funding and support you need from grant makers and the communities and major donors so you want to make sure that you <coughs> You want to make sure that your programs are successful and success does not mean just coming through the program and leaving it actually means coming through the programs and making sure that whatever your desired result was for that particular participant or those participants as a whole that those results held over an extended period of time okay so another thing that you want to look at is your volunteer system so does your volunteer system um do you have enough people volunteering for the programs and services that you offer and the amount of pa participants that you serve so are there and are those volunteers qualified to help you administer services to these particular um, participants so let's say that you have a rehab center where you're helping people to get off drugs and you have volunteers when you're going to get volunteers you want to be strategic in the volunteers that you actually have working for your organization and I say working because that's what they're doing even though they're volunteering volunteer is a job because they're giving of their time and they're 
fulfilling a particular need. When they come in, you're giving them tasks to do and at the end of their shift, their volunteer shift, whether they're there for three hours or they're there for six hours, it's a time frame in which they have to accomplish a task. So that's why I refer to it as working. They're just not getting paid, but hopefully they understand how to volunteer effectively and they can use the skills that they're learning there to propel them into other areas. But back to volunteering. So you want to make sure that the people that you have volunteering have the necessary training in order to help the participants in your program. It doesn't mean that they have to come in with bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and PhDs in substance abuse counseling or psychology or social work or, um, or sociology. It doesn't mean that. It just means that if somebody is wholeheartedly wants to volunteer, wants to give up their time to this particular cause that you are willing to give them the training necessary to become a volunteer. So when people say volunteering is free and all oh, we're looking for volunteers, if you're running a true volunteer program, a successful volunteer program, you are going to need to invest. You should have a volunteer manager. If you have more than two volunteers or two to five volunteers in your organization, depending on what type of organization you have, you need somebody to be in charge of the volunteers to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, when they're supposed to be doing, how they're supposed to be doing it, and they're representing the organization in the best light, that you have all the paperwork signed and you know everything legally wrapped up in a tight bundle for these volunteers because remember they're having access to confidential information of your other clients and so you want to make sure that the volunteers that you invest money into making sure that these volunteers are well trained and if you have somebody in charge of your volunteer program which you eventually will as you grow um, that person has to be be trained and paid as well because they're a full-time employee because part of their job would be to uh, recruit new volunteers. So volunteerism is not completely free. So don't be eluded by, oh, volunteers, I can get volunteers and it's completely free because it really and truly is not a free service. One of the other things that you need to assess um, for 2018 moving into 2019 is your participants. So did you have enough participants this year um, to justify your actions? So let's say you are a youth program and you have been in business for the entire year of 2018 and you only served 20 students all year. You need to ask yourself why. Why were you only able to serve 20 students? Was it because you lacked the funding to serve more than 20 students? Or were you um, not successful at recruiting more than 20 students? Regardless to whichever answer you give, that means you need to assess that area and figure out how you're going to fix that in 2019. If it is funding, then we talked about that earlier. You need to make sure you have fundraising activities in, in place. You need to make sure that you're networking so that you can get donors to donate to your organization to help you subsidize the, what it's gonna cost you to run each program. If it is students, then you need to be recruiting um, actively recruiting students. It means you need to start making friends with some of the principals and the, the teachers in the schools that are within your the a certain range of your organization's base. Okay, so if, you, if you're dealing with elementary schools, then you need to get to know the elementary school um, principals, assistant principals, and some of the teachers and the guidance counselors so that they can help feed students to you. If it is, um, let's say, you, you have a counseling and your nonprofit provides counseling, 
then you still need to go and you need to you need to meet um, pediatricians or nurse practitioners that deal with children and they can probably refer student uh, children to you that have some type of mental issue that they need counseling for you need to get to know the school psychologist so that they can refer students to you as well and then you need to just market you need to market on social media you need to market on publications that uh are geared towards kids you just need to market whatever the deficit is in you getting uh participants into your door you have to make adjustments in your marketing plan to make sure that you're getting them in in 2019 there's no reason why you should there's so many people out here who need the services and programs that your organization um, has that there should not be a deficit of people coming through your door it will be in your marketing you're not getting people don't know you exist and if they don't know you exist then they cannot use your services and don't be afraid to ask for referrals if you had 20 people you serve 20 people this year tell those 20 people I need you to tell other people who are in the same situation that you're in or similar situation about the organization refer them here don't keep us a secret we're not a secret don't keep us to yourself so that's something that you would want to do ask for referrals tell your friends and family talk about your organization all the time I like to say every time you open your mouth you should be opening your mouth with purpose meaning that you're opening your mouth in order to get a result so every time you open your mouth you're opening your mouth with purpose to get a result do you understand that so there's no reason why you should lack participants in your organization so those are some of the points that you really want to go over and then you want to assess your board let's not forget about the board you want to assess your board and the board wants to assess you to see if even though you're the founder it doesn't mean that you still have to be a part of the organization if the board feels that you're not a good fit anymore because you're not Furthering the mission, you know, if you're not bringing in enough participants, if you're not running the organization according to compliance standards, if you're not following best practices, if the organization is losing money, did not gain any new revenue within the year, the board can decide that maybe you're not the best fit for the organization and they can vote to let you go. So these same um, things that you're assessing are the same things that you want to assess for you did I succeed in these areas and if I didn't these are the areas I need to concentrate on next year and then you can plead with the board see I have a plan I already have a plan I know that I fell short here here and here and I have a plan for success in 2019 so you want to be able to go to the board prepared and you want to be able to assess the board is the board living up to their fiduciary duties are they doing what they're supposed to do um, the board assesses itself though but are they doing what they're supposed to do to help to further the mission of the organization are they helping out with fundraising are they donating to the organization as well are they bringing in any new donors are they helping to get the word out about the organization because they should be talking about the organization as well it should not be just a one-way street so these are the five main things that you want to think about when you're looking at assessing did 2018 work and if it didn't what can I do to make it work in 2019 so assessing the board assessing your programs and services going over the financials for the um, the organization and making sure that you know where the money is coming in where you're leaking money from and where you need to get money in in 2019 making sure that your programs and services are sound and that they're getting the desired result and that you're following up even after people have left your programs because you can use them as testimonials that your programs and services do work these are stories that you can be telling on social media to help garner new support for your organization and making sure that you are living up <coughs> to 
what you said you were going to do as the ED and also making sure that your volunteers are well trained and understand what their obligations are to the organization. So make sure you take some time, sit down and assess what went right in 2018 and how you can fix those problems in 2019 or improve upon the ones that actually worked. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Nonprofit Biz Talk. Until next time, remember there's someone in your community waiting on the support of your organization and it is your responsibility to make sure that you get it right. Bye, guys.